fraud here. <laughs> really shouldn't be here at all. Um, maybe I could just talk a little bit about, about the difference between being a professional and an amateur. Uh, it's interesting, I, my day job, I'm a photographer, that's what I do. Uh, and you'll notice when you look at advertisements for cameras that they, they always, the more expensive ones, they call them professional, right? Um, well, really, professional simply means you're being paid. Uh, amateur comes from the Latin amore, it means you're doing it for love. It's much more noble. Professional just means your pants are down and your hands are on the floor. Okay. Uh, I have a very strange career background. I've got slightly got the heebie-jeebies being in here because I, the last time I was in this room was approximately 1981 during Philosophy 101. Okay. <laughs> Hasn't changed that much. So uh, I, I came to Auckland University and I did uh, studied uh, history, a BA in history, and uh, went and then went to the School of Fine Arts and uh, studied photography. And since then, and I carried food around in restaurants an awful lot. Um, and then I, like Ian, I in my own business, I'm a, a, a photographer specialising in photographing the built environment. Um, now, out of that, and out of a general passion for cities, I just uh, strangely started turning a, many people, a career that many people envy. Uh, I sort of started stopping to do it and got involved in this potentially very boring one called transport. Um, and the sim there's a simple reason for that, because uh, transport is a little, it's very similar to how Homer Simpson discussed, discussed alcohol. Uh, Homer Simpson said, ah, alcohol, the solution to and the cause of all of our problems. <laughs> and in Auckland, it's very clear to me that the, the solution to and the cause of all of our problems is, is transport planning. Or, if I want to get really mean and pejorative, is specifically the whole idea of the traffic engineer. Um, this is a, 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 a typology that I don't think should exist uh, at all. Um, I think we should have human engineers, or we should have transportation <coughs> planners or transportation consultants, but we shouldn't have people working for vehicles. Vehicles are, a, are simply a tool. They don't need their own special category of professional. Um, it is one of the crazier inventions of the 20th century is the traffic engineer. Um, uh, so I strongly advise you to follow the other people here with having a much broader um, uh, portfolio of skills than simply counting cars. Okay. Uh, um, in order to give you something, <laughs> in order to give you something a little, um, a little to look at, and given that I'm a photographer, I really should. I just I haven't prepared something because I've just come straight from a two-day conference um, on transport infrastructure, and this is I'll just give you the beginning of, of the presentation I gave to just give you a little hint of, of where I'm coming from. So I am a part of the editorial team at Transport Blog, which is an entirely voluntary run uh, a public space for discussing, uh, really discussing Auckland's urban form. It, transport is quite literally a, simply a means to an end, and as I think Ian said. Transport and land use, uh, you know, it's one coin, two sides. Uh, they, they're, they're absolutely inseparable. And uh, I do find it odd that we, we teach planning over here and, and traffic engineering over there. Um, oh, I, sp I suppose I should point out also that a few years ago I went up to the School of Architecture and Planning and said, look, uh, started to talk to the Dean about the possibility of me doing a, a jumping into a, doing a Master's in Urban Design. At the end of the conversation, I was teaching Urban Design. So I spent three years teaching again, completely fraudulently, without any training. Um, I was teaching urban design at the School of Architecture and Planning. I enjoyed it much more than the year I spent teaching photography at Elam because it was kind of like playing in somebody else's sandpit. <laughs> it's sort of more always the other kids' house is more fun. You know, the toys are better. So uh, th this uh, talk was a, with the title. The title is a little provocative because it, almost anyone you talk to, they'll say, what is the problem in transport? It's congestion. We've got to kill it. We've got to hit it with a stick. Now, my view in general is that, um, you know, Detroit isn't very congested right now. Um, <laughs> San Francisco is very congested. Which of these places is successful? Um, so let's talk about qualities of congestion. And there's a, uh, an architectural critic in San Francisco called John King who, who said, uh, seductive congestion, that's what the great cities are about. So it's putting a quality onto congestion. I'd like to start with this. This is not a, um, uh, a design for a new flag. 
Thanks. <laughs> I think Scotland's already got it, pretty much. Uh, this, this is, um, visual communications is a thing I really like. This is one of the simplest charts you'll ever see. 2011, the world went more urban than, than rural for the first time, apparently, according to the World Bank. And they confidently predict it's going to keep going. <laughs> it's exactly the same. That's a real, class, a, a real classic bit of um, extrapolation, which is something to really look out for when you look at projections into the future. Um, what is a city? So I'm passionate. My passion, what is it that, that I love? Why am I doing this? It's cities, actually. I love cities and urban form and... 25-odd uh, years of photographing architecture. It's what you, there's one category, one skill you actually need to do that well, along with sort of being able to handle a camera, is you look. You just have to look really hard. I spent a lot of time looking really hard at cities. And slowly you start to unpack it and you start to ask the question, why is it like this? Somebody made a decision to put those six signs on that traffic island. You know, How did that happen? And uh, I'm, I'm more interested now in... in, in how we can make uh, cities, and Auckland in particular, better than, than just photographing the occasional um, beautiful piece of architecture, especially once it occurred to me that, in some cases, the architect's job is improved if their diamond is in a sea of shit. So the context, the gap between the buildings, the negative space, that's where we are, that's where we live. So rather than, say, talking about a building having a public facade, I just want to think of it as the public's facade. That's where we live. So firstly, I just want to start about the cities, talking about cities. Basically, uh, every time people make that decision to move from their um, shack in the country to the city, they're almost certainly making a, the right decision. This is the uh, evidence. There's New Zealand right on the curve. Basically, the more urban you are, the more prosperous that you're likely to be. This is why city states like Singapore, Hong Kong are very wealthy. Of course, there's outliers, crazy ones that are also urban but also sit on um, vast amounts of oil tend to be the outliers at the top. Um, <laughs> we live in a rural nation, don't we? Don't we? It's really, all we do is turn rain into milk? No, that isn't what we do. Um, New Zealand has a strange idea about itself. Um, it's We are built on a ethos that's deeply suspicious of the urban realm. Um, I rattle through this as, you know, it matters, it is a competition. Because we're isolated, we kind of think we're not in competition with anything. But Auckland is in a competition, especially with the uh, cities in the Australian seaboard, we're in competition for talent. And, you know, we can see this now, it's a very interesting thing with, <coughs> with immigration going the other way. Um, Ed, to, uh, to quote El Ed Glazer again, what is a city? It's simply the um, diminishment of physical space between humans. That's what a city is. And you know what? We actually all like it. Mo all over the world, 7,000 years of civilization, we've all built cities. And there's lots of reasons why this is advantageous to us. All sorts of transactions, uh, economic, social, sexual. There are more options when there are more humans. Um, yet, this is how we view ourselves. Uh, <laughs> th this is where we actually live and how we treat our environment, but that's what we that's the story we tell ourselves about ourselves. <coughs> You've driven all the way to the top of that hill in an SUV and taken a bike off. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's why we love NZ, apparently. Hang on. Try again? Yeah, all right. Um, so the, the, in my visual art background, I'm, I'm keenly aware of, of uh, how visual images um, inform our views about ourselves. This is Edward Doré from the uh, late 19th century. This is a view of London, industrial London, complete with that, you know, the worst thing in the world, a train. Um, this is the fallen state that New Zealand in many ways was founded on, the escape from this, uh, these uh, disbenefits of, of getting extremely close together. So New Zealand was very much founded on escaping from this. Yet we do actually have a city. This is a graphic illustration of journey to work data. So this is people's actual commutes in Auckland. So not only um, is Auckland a city, but also it actually has a very strong centre. It has some sub-centres too, but it is a city with a centre. There are a lot of myths about Auckland. One of them is that we're very uh, dispersed and not dense. It's not true. And that we don't have a centre, etc. I can bang on about that. Um, there's a visual, this is done by another, well, one of our team at Transport Blog, Kent Lundberg. That is property value visualised. So it shows that Auckland conforms to the 
classic form of being much more valuable in the centre. It, there's also other things to learn about that at Constable Road. Um, you can see the, talking about severance, um, the strangling noose of the motorway corridor. <laughs> uh, abrupt cut off. Um, again, that's a bit technical, I can get into that. That just shows Auckland is getting denser. I sat through an economist uh, talking today from NZIAR saying um, cities in the world are all getting less dense. He obviously wasn't facing the front on my talk the day before. Okay, wrap it up. Um, so, <laughs> on it goes. We might even get some of my phone. I love that. Uh, Milan Kundera said, the highway is the triumphant destruction of the state. Which is very nice. Anyway, um, <laughs> I don't really know what I, career advice I can give you. I, I advise you to get a career. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, uh.